Welcome back to this deep learning playlist. Please consider subscribing to the channel if you are new here and consider watching all the tutorials in sequence to have a better grip on the subject. So with this lecture, we are starting the discussion around optimizers in deep learning and we are going to cover all the optimizers within two different videos and this one is going to be the part one where we are going to discuss some basic optimizers like gradient descent and its other flavors like stochastic gradient descent and mini batch gradient descent. So buckle up, drop a like below and subscribe to the channel if you are new here and without any further delay, let's get started. Before we start understanding about any individual optimizer within deep learning, let's try to have a quick recap and understand what are optimizers in a nutshell. So I'm assuming that you are following all the lectures within this playlist in a sequence and you have also covered the lecture on forward and backward propagation, the very recent one that we have covered. And over there, we have understood that in a forward propagation, we feed in the input values of the features to the model. And with the help of a forward propagation, we get an output from the final layer. And that output will give us or will help us to calculate the loss. Then again, with the help of a back propagation, we try to get this loss minimized by adjusting the weights. So let's suppose that we have our weights over here, W1 and W2 here, W3 and W4 here. And the preceding weights will be W5 and W6. We will also have the bias terms, but let's ignore it for the time being. And let's assume that by doing a back propagation, these are the six coefficient parameters respectively that we need to adjust in such a way that we can achieve the minimum loss for the model. And by the way, achieving these best values for all these coefficients or all these weights is actually called the training of the model. I hope you are already aware with that. And we have discussed this entire thing in a lot of details within the previous lecture of forward and backward propagation. And within this lecture, let's proceed further considering the knowledge we have gained from the previous lecture. And we will learn about the algorithm that helps us to adjust the values for these weights. And these are the algorithms that we call optimizers in deep learning. And within this lecture, we are going to learn about three different types of optimizers, which is widely used within training of a neural network within deep learning. And let's start with the first optimizer, which is gradient descent. So I will first rewrite all the coefficients over here on this diagram. So it will be W1, W2, W3 and W4. On this layer, let's say we have W5 and W6. So you already know that in order to minimize the loss, we will have to adjust the values of all the weights within the model which are being used. However, in order to keep the explanation simple and basic, we are going to focus on only one particular weight which is W1. So whatever we understand by the optimization for W1, same idea will be applied for the weight adjustment of all the other coefficients. Now coming back to gradient descent, if we try to recall the formula, then it was W nu, which means the new value for this weight W1 will be equals to W old, which was the previous value for W1 minus a small learning rate multiplied by DL by D w old and this means what is the rate of change in the loss given a small change with the value of w old after calculating this particular derivative value we will multiply that with this small learning rate it could be something like 0 0.01 and then we subtract this entire value from the previous value of our coefficient which will give us the new value for the weight W1, which we are trying to optimize. So I would like to go deeper into the explanation of this gradient descent algorithm. And let's say initially the value for this particular weight W1, let's assume that it was 0 0.03. And on the right side, I'm going to plot a figure. This figure is showing us the value of loss on the Y axis with respect to the value of the coefficient on the X axis. And let's say initially when we are using this value, for the W1 coefficient, let's say this value gives us a high loss value on this point. And of course, the objective is to come down towards this particular point where we have the global minimum. In simple words, where we have the minimum loss. In further simple words, the point where our prediction becomes very close to the actual values. And this should be the property of a good machine learning or deep learning model, isn't it? 
and let's assume in order to come down to this particular global minima point the value of the weight w1 should be 0.72 which means you can understand starting from this particular point we need to take several steps in order to come down to the best value for the coefficient and optimizers like gradient descent actually helps us to take these efficient steps so that we can converge to the best value that will give us the minimum loss here which means with each steps like this let's say on this point the value of w1 increases to 0.21 then it increases to 0.45 and then it increases to 0.62 and then finally we reach the best value for the coefficient then for each of these steps the loss will start decreasing like this so i hope that now i was able to provide you a very foundational understanding around the function of a gradient descent algorithm so i'm going to quickly erase all of this if you want then you can take a screenshot of it okay so now let's discuss few more interesting things about this algorithm so let's assume a data set that has 50 records in total which means we have number of rows equals to 50 n is equals to 50 in that case let's say that we are starting with an initial guess of w1 is equals to 0.03 which we understand is not a perfect value for the coefficient so it will give us higher loss using this coefficient value we will try to do the prediction for all the 50 records and then we will calculate the cost so what i'm simply saying that we are going to do a summation from i is equals to 1 to 50 for all the predictions so y minus y hat and this will be y i and this will be y hat i so basically what i'm saying against each and every record you will subtract the predicted value from the final value and you do this for all the 50 records and then you are summing it up and let's assume this is a simple loss function or cost function that we are using so this thing will give us the loss with respect to the entire data set and let's say that this loss value is falling somewhere over here so accordingly we try to converge down to the global minima point so in case of a standard gradient descent the weight updation will happen something like this we calculate the cost for the entire data set and once this cost value is being calculated only then we will go and update the values for the coefficients so it is time that i introduce you to terms like epochs and iterations let's talk about iteration first iteration simply means number of forward and backward propagation performed that's it so what happens when you perform forward and backward propagation once you start with an initial guess for all the coefficients using that you try to make a prediction then you calculate the loss and again you will do the back propagation to adjust these values this entire cycle when you are performing one time that will be called one iteration and as you can understand so far in case of gradient descent we do this iteration only after making the prediction for the entire data set so after doing the prediction for entire data set only when we calculate the cost then with respect to this cost value we do the iteration to adjust the values of these weights i hope that you are clear at least till this point on the other hand epochs simply means that how many times you are scanning this entire data set or should i say you do the prediction for all the records of the data set to adjust the weights so let's say we are starting with random values for all the coefficients to do the prediction for the entire data set for all the records and then we are performing the iteration to adjust the weights which means then only we are going back to the neural network to adjust the weights and we are doing this using the back propagation method and let's say you adjust your values from 0.3 to let's say 0.42 then you do the same thing for the entire data set again that will be called second epoch and while training your model you can decide that how many number of epochs you want let's say you want to have 10 epochs it means 10 times you will try to do the prediction for the entire data set and in case of gradient descent the number of iterations performed will also be equals to 10 however this is not the case with the other variants of gradient descent particularly when you are working with a standard gradient descent only then the number of epochs and iterations will be same however these values will be different when you are working with other variants like stochastic gradient descent or mini batch gradient descent so you will have a better understanding once we go ahead and discuss stochastic gradient descent so i am going to make it a bit cleaner so now let's explore what happens when you are using stochastic gradient descent instead of the regular gradient descent so while working with this particular variant of gradient descent 
the number of iterations that you are performing that will be executed differently compared to a regular gradient descent. So this time we are not summing it up in order to calculate the cost because we are going to do the iterations depending on the loss or you can say depending on the difference between the actual value and predicted value for each and every record. So in this case again you get started with a random guess for the coefficient then you do the prediction for one particular record and calculate the loss and let's say this loss value is falling somewhere over here okay so this time you are going to do the back propagation to adjust the value of your weights in such a way that you minimize the loss for one particular record not for the entire data set the way we were doing previously with gradient descent so let's say after performing this one iteration your loss comes to this point over here then again you will calculate the loss for the second record and going by the loss value for that particular record you will do another iteration and let's assume that brings the loss to this point okay right here and you will be doing the same thing for all the records you have for instance we have 50 records within this sample data set so the number of iteration performed will be equals to 50 while the number of epochs performed will remain only one and the convergence will happen something like this if you can see the figure it will go something like this then like this and going by this zigzag manner it will try to converge to the global minima point so previously when we were working in order to minimize the loss with the regular gradient descent at that time the convergence happens smoothly like this okay it converges to the global minima without creating any noise or disturbance exactly the way we want and why is that because the regular gradient descent performs the iteration or you can say performs the forward and backward propagation in order to minimize the loss or cost for the entire data set and this is why because the global minima point belongs to the loss with respect to the entire data set this is why the convergence happens smoothly in the expected direction but see what is happening over here in case of stochastic gradient descent every time we are doing the iteration in order to converge to the minimum point we are doing that with respect to one particular row or one particular record and this is the reason we are moving in this zigzag manner and as you can already understand since we are moving towards the global minima point by taking these zigzag steps or you can say by having a lot of noise with the convergence the training of the model becomes really slow and this is very obvious because you are wandering around the curve towards the global minima and you are not moving in a straightforward way and additionally when we are doing this thing for 10 epochs in that case the number of iterations that you will have to perform will be equals to 500 so remember when i said previously that the number of epochs and iteration will be the same when you are using the typical gradient descent however this is going to be different when you are working with the other variants of the gradient descent so there is one advantage for stochastic gradient descent over the standard gradient descent and that is due to the frequent iterations the weight updation or training becomes faster however the disadvantage is it takes longer to converge to the global minima point and additionally one more disadvantage is when you are converging using the stochastic gradient descent then it will not converge perfectly to the global minima point over here instead it will stop its training somewhere over here at this point and the reason is very obvious because this convergence is happening considering the loss of an individual record at a time. So is there a way that we can use the advantages from both the variants, the normal gradient descent and this stochastic gradient descent as well? And you will find the answer with a mini batch gradient descent. So that is the next thing that we are going to discuss. So when you are working with the mini batch gradient descent, you are neither considering the entire data set in order to calculate the cost the way gradient descent does nor you are considering only one particular record in order to calculate the loss the way stochastic gradient descent does instead you divide the entire data set in different batches so i will try to explain what i'm saying let's say that we have 50 records within the data set right so we can decide that we are going to have five batches each with 10 records so this time what happens is you again start with a random value for your weights and you will be calculating the loss for number of records that you have decided in a given batch 
So let's say we are going to have five batches each with 10 records. So you will do the prediction for let's say first 10 records. Let's say this value is 10. Okay. Then you will calculate the loss with respect to these 10 records and then you will perform the iteration in order to adjust your weights. So in this case, if you are doing only one epoch, if you are training your model for only one epoch, then since you are doing the forward and backward propagation every time you are doing the prediction for 10 records and there are 50 total records within the data set, the number of iteration performed for one epoch will be 5 because you are performing one iteration every time you are doing the prediction for 10 records and there are 50 records in total. So I hope this makes sense to you. Similarly, let's say in this case, if you have decided to do five epochs, then the total number of iterations performed will be five multiplied by five, which is 25. And using this trick of mini batch gradient descent, you can have the advantages of both gradient descent and stochastic gradient descent. And also the issue of the noise that we were facing previously with the convergence, this thing also will not be there anymore. However, it is not going to be as straightforward as the regular gradient descent. But still, since we are not using a stochastic gradient descent that was giving us a convergence like this, let's suppose like this, when you are using mini batch gradient descent, the convergence will happen something like this. Okay, I hope you can understand. This will make more sense if I erase this part. Okay, like this. So the noise has been reduced over here. I hope that you were able to gain a good understanding around all these three optimizers. So let's talk about vanishing gradient descent first. Let me provide you a geometrical understanding first. Okay, so assume this as the curve of the loss while you're training the model. And this is the initial loss at this point. And obviously you will be willing to converge to this global minima point. So each time you will have to take a step towards the correct direction like this. As close as you reach to the global minima point, the size of these steps will start decreasing. Although the step size is decreasing, but it is still converging to the global minima point and this is something that we want. However, when we face the issue of vanishing gradient descent, the situation becomes that after reaching to a certain point, then you do not move any longer. But you can say the steps that you will be taking will be infinitely small. So small that you won't be able to reach this global minima point. And now let's discuss why this issue happened. So let's assume that you are working with a deep neural network. And when I say deep neural network, it means that you have so many hidden layers, something like this. Okay. And let's say this derivative value is 0.1 on this layer, again, 0.1 on this layer and so on. Then in order to reduce the loss, when you are performing the back propagation to adjust the coefficient values at the input layer, using the chain rule, you will have to multiply all these values all these derivative values within the hidden layers and this value can become really really small something like this and again when you are multiplying this small value with an even smaller learning rate then this entire product value will again become infinitely small so what i'm saying is this value this particular value will become really really small something like this maybe something like this okay and let's say you are trying to take an efficient step like this towards the global minima point then this particular thing will no longer remain possible because let's say you are trying to achieve an efficient new value for your weights and let's say your old value was one and when you are subtracting this small value from your old value one then the new value itself will be really really close to the old value and this was something that i tried to explain you over here that after taking certain steps these steps will become so small so infinitely small that it will never converge to the global minima point and you will have a complete clarity around why this derivative value is becoming extremely small. Why these values within the hidden layer are so small. So if you have already covered the lecture on activation functions within this particular playlist, then you will be already able to understand why this derivative value is becoming so small. Why these values within the hidden layers are becoming so small. This is an issue that we have discussed previously when we were studying activation functions like sigmoid or tan -H. So consider watching that particular lecture if you have not watched it yet and you will be able to understand the reason behind it. And over there we have also discussed the solution around it that in order to tackle this issue of vanishing gradient descent, most of the times you will be using ReLU variants within the hidden layers. And we will be closing this lecture by having a basic understanding around exploding gradient. So the issue so far we have discussed around with gradient descent was related to these steps becoming so small that the convergence stops 
and the training gets interrupted. However, assume that what will happen when these steps will become really big. So with the first step, your loss will go down to this point over here. With the second big step, your loss will shoot up to this point over here. Then again, it might shoot back to this point, let's say over here. And this issue is called exploding gradient descent, where instead of converging the loss to the global minima point, the loss value will keep on wandering here and there, and this will never converge to the global minima. And there could be multiple reasons why this thing happens. One of the reasons could be the weight initialization was not happened correctly. So going forward, we are going to discuss that what could be the correct techniques of initializing your weight. Also, if the learning rate value has been kept comparatively bigger, that can also cause this issue of exploding gradient descent. So moving ahead within this deep learning playlist, we are going to have a dedicated lecture around how do we improve the performance of a deep learning neural network. And within that particular lecture, we are going to discuss different techniques of improving the performance of the model. And we will also discuss few of the weight initialization techniques in order to avoid these issues like vanishing gradient descent or exploding gradient descent. So please smash the like button below if you found this video helpful and also consider subscribing and pressing the bell icon if you are new to the channel. Soon enough, we will be completing this entire playlist around deep learning. And going ahead, we will also discuss topics like convolutional neural network or a recurrent neural network. So a lot of exciting stuff is coming along the way. Thank you very much for watching till the end. You have a nice day ahead.